This is Courage Barbell. I'm Chad Ikes. And I'm this Joe Sullivan. This is Joe Sullivan. <laughs> who was kind enough to come on and uh, do a guest session or interview, I guess you would say, whatever you want to say. Um, which is cool for me because I've known Joe for a long ass time. Yeah. And he's one of those guys that um, I got to see and kind of help early on mm-hmm. and to see how he actually embraced not being a meathead, but being an intelligent lifter and where it, where it got him. And that's something I push a lot is like, we need to stop the meathead bullshit and actually be athletes and be intelligent. Yeah. So you've done, you've accomplished so much shit. I'm not even going to remember it. So this is your promotional little, little setup here. Well, <laughs> well for, first, before I talk about like the stuff that I've done, I just wanted to like touch on how, you, how you said it. Like, I, we were talking about it at, at the gym earlier today because we, we've been hanging out all day pretty much. But, like, I can't even remember when it was the first time that you and I met. But, like, back in 2000, it had to have been, like, 2011, 2012, 2013, something like that. But it was at one of the Learn to Trains at Elite FTS. And I was telling Bree when you and I were, like, texting and coordinating, like, the trip and, like, just bit like we were going to do an interview or talk or hang out or whatever the fuck we were doing. I was just kind of like... This is super cool for me, and it is cool for me because, like, I remember being like the 19 or 20 year old fucking dude that was like just wanted to be a really great power lifter, you know. And I'm just like, I'm I really want to get good at this. I'm gonna go to Elite FDS and learn from some of the best and whatever. And it's like, I went there and I remember meeting you, and I was like, holy fuck, this dude is like so strong. This is so cool. Like, it's Chad Ikes. Like, I've read your shit, I've seen your lifting. This is amazing. You know, and it's like I started off in that position where I was like, I don't want to say that I was nobody, but I was nobody. I was just some kid, you know, and now I'm at a point where it's like, oh, I can like, I'm talking to you on the phone. I'm texting you. We're coordinating, like setting up an interview or a conversation or whatever. And I'm like, fuck, this is kind of crazy for me, you know, because like I start off and it's like I, I met you. I met Duffin at one of those learn to trains. I met Dave at one of those learn to trains I met I've I've met all these people and it's gone from like I've seen people I've I've looked to people as like idols or like people that I look up to and it's like I still look up to people Mm -hmm. but it's like it's gone from like people above me to like I I have these peers that I hold a lot of respect for but it's just surreal to me to like be presented with that because like every time every time like I have an instance where like we're doing this interview and I'm like man I've known that person for fucking ever and it's like dude I fucking like looked up to him and it was like fuck that I still remember like being a kid and like thinking that way and then like Duffin texted me on my birthday and was like happy birthday and I'm like that's kind of fucking crazy I'm like that's weird as fuck you know and it's like just having those little instances where like we were talking earlier about how the people that we follow and the people that we idolize, they're just people. Yeah. And it's the same with like you, it's the same with me. And when you actually start to realize that and then develop relationships with those people, it's just like, fuck, this is kind of nuts. Yeah. You know, and it's surreal and and it's cool, but it's like that not to be cliche, but it's like anybody can fucking do it because all we all are yeah. is just people. We're all just regular people. Yeah, that just decided to be good at lifting weights and it was learn it's about like it. i have all kinds of stories I don't, I don't i try not to bring up people's names unless they don't care but like i mean i have stories of of working a booth at the arnold and i see ed Cohn, like walking down the aisle and i'm like holy shit that's ed Cohn, man it's yeah. ed Cohn. And, he, and i'm like he's walking towards me why is that and this is all in my head like why is ed Cohn walking towards me what's going he hey chad how's it going you lifting this weekend and i'm like <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, I am. And I'm like texting Ethan, Ed Cohn knows my name, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you're like, no way. How is that guy so cool, you know? It, it's shit like that, dude. And I, I still have moments like that. Yeah. Because, like, when I, uh, when I, I what? Trained, yeah, like, I trained at Dragon's Lair when I first walked in there, like, I, I met Flex Lewis, and he's like, oh, Joe Sullivan. And I'm like, ha, 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 what? Yeah. yeah. And he's like, yeah, you know, like the, the power lifter. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I am, and it's just like holy fuck, that dude knows who I am. It's, yeah, it's wild. You know? I still have that with with you and like some of the younger guys. Like I'll run into 
I can't think of a name right now, but I'll run into one of the younger guys that I'm watching right now going, Jesus, this guy's strong as shit. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, you're Chad Ice, dude. I used to watch your videos all the time. You motivated me. And I'm like, dude, like you're going to make me tear up, dude. Yeah. I feel fucking honored that you, yeah. that you even know who I am. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's, I can only imagine, like, you getting that because it's like I, I'm starting to get that shit. Where, like, people, like, I have this one dude uh that message or that uh he's competing in uh in the qualifier for world strongest man and uh in arizona in like fucking two weeks or so i think i can't remember his fucking name but we talk on instagram occasionally and mm -hmm. like he told me that like he's the re i'm the reason that he started lifting weights and i'm like you're literally like in contention to be like on world strongest man right. like, what the fuck are you talking about and he's like Oh, you know, I wa I watched the one video where, like, you said, like, the adapter die thing, and just like, fuck it, it's like, you. I think you were super upset about something, but like, you just turned it into a positive, and you know, it just really resonated with me because, like, he was going through some shit at the time, and he's like, that made me go check out this, uh, like, powerlifting gym, and then I ended up doing that for a minute, and then going into strongman, and it's just like, fuck, you know, that's amazing, like, yeah. it's crazy to hear that yeah. shit. You know, but um, to go back to what you said, uh, like the stuff I've done besides like, like the, the, the reason people like look up to me or like care about what I'm doing is like I, I started powerlifting. I told you earlier today, like in 2007 when I was 13 years old, first meet I totaled 1,075 as a 275 single ply lifter, just some fat fucking high school kid. And then my best, like my highest total ever, it was in wraps is 2,132 uh, at 220. And it's like, I've put in, in 2000. How, when was that? 2018, 2018. So like, that's, what is that? Like 11 so that's, years? Yeah, but you put yeah. on over a thousand pounds. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. similar. Uh, similar to yours. Yeah, exactly yeah, what like I said adding, in that like 10 year period. 10 year period of like yeah. adding a hundred pounds. For yeah. So all you people that think you're gonna get strong in a year, it don't ha it no, don't happen. No, but like in the, over the course of that time, like I had I had some really good performances. Like I started, I said I was like a fat, a fat. Uh, I was a very very childhood obesity oriented kid. Like I entered high school at like two hundred and ninety pounds. I yeah. was big. But like I competed in the two seventy five weight class, and then I went to two forty two, two twenty, one ninety eight, and I went as low as one eighty one. And then I basically like, I got lean or I got smaller, I lost weight and I was like, why am I not jacked? And it was like, oh, you actually have to build muscles to be <laughs> jacked. So I started going in the opposite direction and I've done 181, done 198, done 220, done 242. And I'm, I'm at two, I'm consistently competed 220 right now. But like over the course of time, like you can find me on open powerlifting. It's like I've competed, the, yeah, the showdown, cause last year, the showdown uh, that I did in Kansas, the showdown meet in Kansas City, Missouri in 2020, that was my 29th meet I've participated in. And this one that I'm doing in four weeks will be the 30th sanctioned competition that I've competed in. And it's like, I've done a lot of competitions. I've broken uh, two all-time world records, uh, one of which is still held by me. Uh, it's the sleeved squat record in 220. I hit an 822 pound squat. Um, my best sleeve total is 2007 pounds, which is what I hit at last year's showdown. Um, I've, I, over the course of all of this, I mean, like if, if you follow me on Instagram, like I don't just post my lifting. I'm not, I never claim to be like the best lifter out there. Um, but I'm pretty good at it and I'm pretty, I'm pretty consistent with it, which is why like, I think I'm as successful at it as I am. Cause it's just yeah. like, I've been chasing one goal for at this point, literally over half my life. Cause I'm 28 years old now. And it's like, I've been doing this for like going on like 13 years, yeah. 14 years. And uh, yeah, it was just like that singular focus. And I've had my fair share of injuries. So like I, it's like the one kid said like, oh, you're the reason I started lifting weights. Like I'm very open about like the shit that I struggle with and I've gone through. I've ruptured both bicep tendons. I have this 
a uh, nerve compression injury in my neck that has my bench all struggling right now. Um, just a variety, a variety of stuff. I ruptured my soleus last year. Um, and it's basically just kind of like I, I, I'm not just a lifter, I also coach. And like my whole, my business is literally Adapt or Die, the Adapt or Die collection or collective. It's like, Come on, you got your own business know, name wrong. That, that's, that's my go-to. I also <laughs> fucking stumble over words all the time. But um, it's it's AOD and it's adapt or die. So like my whole thing has always been like you fuck you have to adapt. You have to change with the times. You have to get better. Mm -hmm. You have to fucking accept that like hey maybe this thing it didn't work or maybe I got hurt. Pivot your goals. Fucking go after another thing. Hey maybe this didn't work. Maybe pivot your goals. Try to go after another thing or do it in a different strategy. Like. We were talking earlier, like everybody gets bought into like that one way of doing things. And they're like, it's, this is the best. This is the only way to do it. This has been successful for me and my people. So therefore this is the greatest thing out there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, cool. Super happy that that's helped with you guys. But that's not just the only thing out there because if you approach things with an open mind and are willing to like adapt and change and just like take good things from this, good things from that, good things from this, good things from that, yeah. you can go so much further. And that's that's why I think I'm not just a successful athlete, but I have a really, really stacked and successful coaching roster yeah. right now. And why why I, I've been put in a position where that's like my full-time gig and I have a, a lot of people that are doing really, really, really well under it. So I think that also goes with what we talked about earlier with uh... – like you said, we've been talking all day. Mm -hmm. it's, dude, you can tell we both love this shit because we mm -hmm. fucking nonstop talk about it. Mm -hmm. But Duffin, Chris Duffin did a post about uh, actual the strength curve compared to the people that um, are hard-headed. Mm -hmm. It's like the stronger guys are the guys that don't think they know everything. It's the guys that really are weak that think they know everything. Yeah. Pause the video. I don't know if Chad will edit this. Or superimpose it on the screen, but if not, I took a screenshot of it, pause it, and look at it because I told yeah. you I did, I did take a screenshot. Yeah, of that's it. actually that's yeah. such a great thing, and I think we both kind of agreed on that. Is it's like when I was coming up, it, it got all these local guys in the local gym were like, "Oh, this is all you got to do," and like just stubborn, hard headed, mm -hmm. thought they had it all, and then and then as I got better and better and met better and better people, it was like they're completely open minded. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, here's here's the principles and rules, but like. You need to learn how to bend all this. And as a coach, you really need to learn how to bend it. And as you get older, it changes. As you get stronger, it changes. Like, everything's changing all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and to this point, only because he said it earlier and because I'm the young idiot, I, uh, like, you were like, oh, I don't drop names unless I want to. I literally had a conversation with another young athlete and coach. He's competing at the showdown this upcoming mm -hmm. September. His name is Dawson Windham. And I disagreed with him this morning because I shared this thing where it was like, we need to understand where other coaches are coming from, basically like leading yeah. with empathy and understanding and an open mind and whatever. Yeah. Dawson was like, okay, yeah, this is fine, but fuck Squat University and fuck Joel Seedman. And I'm like, I'm not familiar enough with Joel Seedman to speak on that, but I was like, I love Squat University. I love, I was going to, I know it's fantastic. How could you not, but, how and, could you, I mean, I don't agree with everything he says. But but he says a bunch of really great and, shit, and that's the goddamn thing. You don't have to take everything that ever like. If I like, you can take the good and then be like, eh, I'm not gonna listen to that part. Yeah. But like, this is really great, and this is really simple and really straightforward and really awesome for beginning to beginner to intermediate lifters. Yes, and like I had this discussion with Dawson where where he was like. No, I think this is like misrepresentative of like what we need to be doing. I think he puts it puts it all wrong, and he says like rounding your back is bad. And I'm like, okay, so rather than being like rounding your back is entirely bad, maybe rather than accepting it as like that's what he's saying, maybe it's just saying rounding your back isn't necessarily bad, but it's like maybe you could be better if you avoided the rounding of the back right. a little bit more, and. Even then, it's like maybe you could take these fucking examples because he puts out great content, really yeah. straightforward, easy to absorb, easy to understand, which is the purpose of goddamn educational stuff on yeah. social media. Yeah. And take the positives and then just be like, yeah, he says some stuff I don't agree with. No, yeah. I hate the whole like, fuck that guy yeah. mentality because there's a lot of people out there that put out 
really great information, and then they have some stuff where it's like, mm, mm, I don't know about that. Yeah. But you don't have you don't have to accept all of it. It's yeah. another person. It's another perspective, and it's like I think Dawson is like he's like twenty three, so he's a kid. Yeah. I mean, I'm a kid, but he's like even more of a kid. Yeah. But it's like I think he's kind of in that position where it's like the the starting getting to the point where like I know I know I know what I know. Yeah. I'm confident in what I know. These guys are all fucking dumb, and it's like. I get it. I've been there. Like, work through that. But, like, you're going to get to a point if you stick with it long enough where you're going to realize that, like, there's a lot more out there to learn. And if you, like, approach it with an open mind and basically are willing to take little pieces of other people's toolbox. Yeah. Not the whole toolbox. But, like, just a little. Just, like, this part and this part and this part. You're going to go so much further than you would otherwise. And you're going to help everybody else that you coach a lot more than you would if you just completely shut out yeah. an entire school. This is what I do. This is all I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look at all the conversations we had today about conjugate versus block periodization yeah. versus linear periodization versus wave loading versus fucking undulating periodization versus whatever the fuck. You know, yeah, and even, or any fucking you know, I'm, everybody knows I'm a conjugate guy. Mm-hmm. But, I, but I've said I think there's something to Wendler's 531. Today, talking to uh, what was this? I forget. Jared his Feather. Yeah, yeah Jared Feather. Renaissance periodization. And I was like, man, it actually is pretty interesting, especially with where I'm at now. Maybe I need to look more into that. And then, like, I have some of my guys that I train. I'm like, dude, follow Squat University, mm-hmm. and they'll come in and go, hey, we saw this video, and he said this. And I'm like, well, first of all, let me watch the video because mm-hmm. what you saw. He may be saying exactly what I'm saying in a different way, mm-hmm. which a lot of times he actually kind of does. And so, but still, I'm not going to shut it out, even if there's a couple things that I don't disagree with. I mean, Jesus, I like I, Ed Combs is my favorite because he does linear periodization. I'm not a fan of linear periodization, but how can I knock it when the goat did it and it was perfect for him? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And even like the rounding back thing, it was interesting because I think it was Eddie posted a thing the other day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it was like we rounded thoracic, him. and people, oh, he said rounded back. No, he said rounded thoracic, yeah, which your like, thoracic actually yeah. does flex. So yeah. like. Exactly, because we're sitting here, and I can, yeah, I can do this. Like that's, that's okay. what your thoracic yeah. is made to do. Exactly, and that's like that goes back to, we were talking earlier today about like understanding like how to actually like apply some basic like biomechanics to movement. Because mm-hmm. like Chad and I have both seen dudes that are like way stronger than you, way stronger than me, do like shit with like and what i mean by that is like just brute strength strong Mm -hmm. like dudes that will like have dog shit form technique or whatever but they'll be able to still finish a lift just because they're that strong the way that i fucking move is like i try to opt i hate using some of these words because they're so like fucking uh not like cliche but they're like buzzwordy yeah it's like i try to optimize my biomechanics or whatever Mm -hmm. the fuck that means i just try to move super efficiently Mm -hmm so that I can move more weight. And I don't really think that makes me more strong. I think it makes me be able to like present the strength that I have Mm -hmm. better and like in a more reliable and like safer and more consistent way. Yeah. But there are a lot of people out there, even ones in my weight class like right now, that I genuinely believe if they like took a step back and like worked on some basic principles, they could come back and shit on anything that I do. Mm-hmm. And there are dude that and that's like the reason that I think like raw powerlifting is so insane right now is because there are people that are actually doing that and applying like, yeah. those basic principles and just training as hard as we always have, but doing shit that nobody ever thought fucking possible. Well since when since when is winning a powerlifting meet you're the strongest guy? Mm-hmm. It means you can lift the most weight. It doesn't really mean you're the strongest dude. Exactly. But I do think we talked about that earlier, like some of the crazy, especially because I, back in my day was gear, but I did gear because that's the best of the best. That's what they were doing. And I just wanted to compete against the best of the best. If they were competing in their fucking underwear, I would have competed in my underwear. Like that's what it was. But some of the numbers we were hitting in gear, guys are doing raw. And I'm just like, fuck, without the support and stuff. But then again, and I talked to Duffin about this too, because we talk, because we like, we had, I rooted and I braced, mm-hmm. but it advanced kind of after that. Mm-hmm. And I luckily I, I'm, I try to keep learning and I keep up with guys. And like, 
I went up to Kabuki and learned some more stuff. And I'm like, me and Chris were talking and we're like, dude, what if we would have braced like this with our gear on? Mm-hmm. If our head wouldn't have exploded, how much weight could we have yeah. lifted? Yeah. And I, <laughs> but I, guys are doing that now raw and they're actually putting up these numbers. And like, I, I, I train the deadlift a lot like Kabuki does where you're, mm-hmm. you basically got to get, you got to force yourself down to that bar. Mm-hmm. And I try to tell people that I've had a suit on, I go, it's like having a suit on. You have a suit in your body. Mm-hmm. Like 300 pounds is going to pop off the floor just from your IAP and your mm-hmm. pressure. Yep. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's the, well, two things. Cause like, I want to, I want to go back and be like, you rooted and you braced, but it's like, that's the beauty of like queuing and coaching and lifting mm-hmm. or whatever. Like back then, back when you were at your peak, people might not have called it rooting or bracing. Yeah. They might've said like, get big air, yeah. spread the floor, right. dig your fucking feet in some mm-hmm. shit like that. But you're doing the same, the same stuff. Yeah. It's just different words. You right. Know? As long as the actual principles of the movement stay the same, it's it's all what it, it's all there. But just like you said, like like going into the next part, you were like it the bar is gonna float off the ground with like three hundred pounds due to your IAP, the intra-abdominal pressure, and pressure, and like another word that I always talk about is tension. Yes. Because like what is what what is putting the suit on? It gives you that tension, it right. gives you that like tightness that you can't really achieve on your own. But everybody's get not everybody, but like there are so many schools of thought these days that are getting like so much better and better and better Mm -hmm. at actually generating tension with your own musculature that like people are getting just as tight, if not tighter, than people are when they're wearing gear. And that's Dave and I used to talk when I trained out at Elite consistently we used to talk about that. He always said, like, I would be an incredible multiply lifter because I love the pressure. I love yeah. creating all that tension. That's, like, what I'm good at. It's the reason that I'm strong. I'm just really good at generating force with my own body. Right. And then it's, like, I can do that with a belt and with my knee sleeves and my wrist wraps and, like, just squeezing the bar yeah. and digging my feet in. But it's, like, imagine if I did all that with... A couple of layers of denim on. Oh yeah. Like I don't. Be, I, I have no idea. If you what, could you know, handle the pressure, yeah, I don't exactly. even know what the pressure like, would you, be you, like. You might get. You, and that's the thing. Like when you do the Valsalva maneuver, which is like taking the big breath in and bracing really hard. That it was developed for fucking fighter pilots. Do you know? I, you know, I actually probably. did not know okay, that. Yeah, no. It was well, I mean, I knew fighter pilots did that. Yeah. And it, as it, soon as you said it, I went click in my head, yeah. but I never really put them together. Because it, it was started, it was like so they don't they, pass out from the G's. Exactly, it's resisting the G yeah. forces. But like they've literally tracked and monitored blood pressure of those fighter pilots. I have no idea that if they've done it with anybody like lifting weights or exerting any force or whatever. But, like, I think the highest recorded blood pressure doing that was, like, 420 over 280. <laughs> Something, like, ridiculous. But it's like, okay, that's literally just somebody in a seat resisting gravity being like, don't yeah. fucking die, don't fucking die. Imagine you have 1,200 pounds on your back. Yeah. And you're doing that same thing. Right. Who the fuck knows what your blood pressure would be? And then, like, apply all the new... And modern like ways of creating tension and bracing, and it's yeah. like your heart literally might explode, yeah. or your brain might. I have no idea. You well, know? it's kind of like you just had a click. I just had a vision in my head when you were talking. <laughs>